What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we'll explore methods to secure devices and essential security best practices. With the increasing reliance on digital devices, it's critical to protect them from threats, both physical and digital. In this video, we'll cover key areas such as security awareness, securing devices, best practices for device use, safe browsing, and privacy considerations. So let's get started by first understanding the importance of security awareness. All right, so security awareness. This is the foundation of protecting devices and data. Many attacks succeed because of human error rather than technical vulnerabilities. The most common threats involve social engineering tactics. Some of those tactics are as follows. First one is social engineering, also known as phishing. This is a common social engineering attack where an attacker tricks a user into providing sensitive information like login credentials through fraudulent emails, websites, or messages. So for example, an email that looks Looks like it's from a trusted source they ask you to reset your password but the link takes you to a fake website that steals your credentials and here are some of the signs of phishing so you want to look out for poor grammar unusual sender addresses and suspicious attachments or links and you always want to verify before clicking or responding to unexpected emails Next, we have what is called malicious or compromised content. So malicious content, this refers to harmful software such as viruses, worms, or ransomware hidden within files, downloads, or links. These can affect your device and steal data or compromised systems. And compromised content may come from legitimate websites or applications that have been hacked. So always ensure content is downloaded from secure and trusted sources, which we will discuss later in this video. So security awareness, including recognizing phishing and malicious content, this is crucial for avoiding many types of cyber attacks. Next, let's now move on to securing devices such as mobile phones and workstations. And this involves multiple layers of protection to ensure devices and data are safe from their attackers. So the first thing we'll talk about is authentication. And this is the process of verifying a user's identity before granting access to a device or system. And strong authentication methods include the following. We have passwords, so you wanna ensure that they are complex and unique. We also have what is called multi-factor authentication. And this combines something you know, such as a password, with something you have, such as a smartphone, or something you are, such as your fingerprint. So using strong authentication, this helps protect devices from unauthorized access. Then we have what is called anti-malware. And this is software that is designed to detect and remove harmful programs like viruses, worms, or spyware. So you always want to keep your anti-malware software up to date to ensure new threats are detected. Also, another aspect of securing your device is implementing firewalls. So a firewall, this monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic. It acts as a barrier between your device and the internet, blocking unauthorized access while allowing legitimate communications. And both hardware and software firewalls can protect workstations and mobile devices. Then we have patching and updating. So patching and updating software and operating systems are critical to closing security loopholes and vendors. They release patches to address vulnerabilities, so make sure automatic updates are enabled to stay protected. And then we have physical device security. So physical security is as important as digital security. And some key practices include implementing devices like cable locks. And these can secure laptops and workstations physically, especially in public places like libraries or offices. And then we also have USB locks, and these prevent unauthorized access via USB ports by locking or disabling them, ensuring that malware cannot be introduced through physical media. So securing devices with authentication, anti-malware, firewalls, patching, and physical measures are essential steps in defending against both cyber and physical threats. Let's now discuss best practices for using devices securely, including managing software licenses and validating software sources. So the first thing we're going to talk about is licensing. So software licensing is crucial for ensuring you use applications legally and securely. And there are several types of licenses. The first one is called an open license. And this is software that is free to use, modify and distribute. While convenient, you want to ensure the source is trustworthy 
and not altered by malicious actors. Then we have what is called a proprietary license. And this is a closed source software requiring a license like Microsoft Windows or Adobe products. And these often come with support and security updates. And then we have subscriptions, one-time purchases, and perpetual licenses. So a subscription license, they are paid regularly, providing ongoing access and updates. A one-time purchase, this grants access without future payments, but may lack updates. And then we have a perpetual license license. This allows for permanent usage, but may include upgrades. So always verify licensing information, use legitimate product keys or serial numbers, and avoid using pirated software, which can introduce security risks. All right, next let's talk about software sources. So it is essential to download software from legitimate sources to avoid malicious or compromised software. So you wanna research and validate your sources. So before downloading any software, research its legitimacy, ensure it comes from a trusted website or application store. And then you wanna to go to OEM websites or the original equipment manufacturer. So for device drivers or system software, always download from the official manufacturer's website to avoid avoid compatibility issues or malware. And then we have third-party websites. You want to be cautious with third-party websites. You want to ensure that they are reputable by checking reviews and using virus scanners. And then we have removing software. So it is important to periodically review and remove software that is no longer needed because unwanted software can take up system resources, which can slow down your device. It can pose a security risk if it is outdated and hasn't been patched. And in the worst case, malicious software can be installed without your knowledge. So properly uninstall unused programs and always scan for malicious software regularly. And then this brings us to software piracy. So be aware of the risk of software piracy. Using pirated software is illegal and also dangerous as it often includes malware and other security threats. So it's important to ensure that all software installed is legally obtained and correctly licensed. All right, so let's move on to safe browsing practices. So as the internet is a major vector for malware and attacks, securing your browsing habits is critical. So let's talk about certificates. So when browsing websites, it's important to verify the security of a site through its certificate. So when it comes to validating certificates, websites with valid certificates, they display a padlock icon in the address bar, showing that they use secure HTTPS connections. And this ensures that any data you enter is encrypted. Then we have invalid or expired certificates. So if a website shows a warning about an invalid certificate, you want to proceed with caution. This could indicate a potential security risk and you should avoid entering sensitive information on these types of sites. And then that brings us to privacy considerations. So when using the web for communications or file sharing, you want to be mindful of your privacy. So when you're on social networking sites, you want to be careful about the personal information you share. You want to avoid oversharing details like your address, phone number, or work schedule, which could be used by attackers for social engineering. When it comes to email, you always want to be cautious with unsolicited emails or attachments. Phishing attacks often come through email with the goal of stealing personal personal information. When it comes to file sharing, only share files through secure trusted platforms. Avoid downloading files from untrusted sources as they may contain malware. And then when it comes to instant messaging, you want to use end-to-end -end encrypted messaging platforms to ensure your communications are private and secure. Now, artificial intelligence powered systems also bring new privacy concerns. AI systems such as chatbots or AI assistants, they collect and analyze large amounts of data. So you want to ensure that privacy settings are properly configured to minimize unnecessary data collection. All right, to wrap all of this up, securing devices and following security best practices is essential for protecting your data and devices from cyber threats. So let's quickly recap. You wanna be aware of social engineering attacks like phishing and malicious content. You wanna secure your devices using strong authentication methods, anti-malware, firewalls, and regular updates. You wanna practice physical security for workstations and laptops. You wanna follow best practices when using software by ensuring proper license licensing, downloading from trusted sources, and regularly removing unnecessary software. And you want to practice safe browsing by paying attention to certificates and being mindful of privacy concerns. By following these methods and best practices, you'll be well on your way to securing your devices and passing the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. 
All right, now with all of that said, let's do some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following is not a recommended practice for securing a workstation? Is it regularly updating the operating system and software with patches? Is it installing and maintaining anti-malware software? Is it using simple, easy to remember passwords for convenience? Or is it enabling the firewall on the workstation? And the correct answer is using simple, easy to remember passwords for convenience. So simple passwords are easier to guess or crack, making them a poor choice for securing a workstation. Strong, complex passwords are using multi-factor authentication are recommended for better security and regular updates, anti-malware and firewalls. They help protect against these threats. Next question. When installing software, which of the following is the best practice to ensure it comes with a legitimate and safe source? Is it downloading to third party websites that offer free versions or paid software? Is it checking the software availability on the original equipment manufacturer's website or the official application store? Is it using any software that appears highly rated on public forums or is it downloading software from peer to peer networks for convenience? And the correct answer would be checking for software availability on the OEM website or the official application store. So to ensure that software is legitimate and safe, it should be downloaded from trusted sources such as the OEM's website or an official app store. Third party sites, peer to peer networks and random software from public forums can often contain malicious or compromised content. And our final question, what is the purpose of device physical security measures like cable locks and USB locks? Is it to prevent unauthorized software installations? Is it to prevent physical theft of the device or unauthorized access to its ports? Is it to ensure the device is kept up to date with security patches or is it to block phishing attempts and other social engineering attacks? And of course, the correct answer is it is to prevent physical theft of the device or unauthorized access to its ports. So physical security measures like cable locks and USB locks are designed to prevent the physical theft of devices or the misuse of ports by unauthorized individuals. These measures are critical for protecting devices in public or shared environments and other measures like anti-malware and software updates, they handle the virtual threats.